I never uh, particularly had to think about arts education. My three sons went to good schools, and between their set designer mother, uh, their jazz lyricist aunt, and their art forum pu publishing uh, uncle, they had plenty of arts engagement built into their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, I arrived at the NEA. I began traveling the country and meeting with artists, teachers, and arts organizations. And I discovered that for far too many of our country's public school students, it cannot be assumed that the arts are a part of their daily lives. And I was very surprised to find that. <clears throat> Uh, and because the diminution of arts education uh, started some 40 years ago, it's been going on quite a while, we are now dealing with a generation of young people whose parents and teachers are also likely not to have had a solid arts education. As I mentioned, I have focused my work on collaborating with other agencies. In order to do so, we need to create a common language. And so we've used the notion of creative placemaking. That's kind of our mantra at the NEA these days. Uh, that's the way that cities and towns literally change when you bring the arts into the center. When you bring art and artists into a place, it changes that place very powerfully, in, in my opinion. But guess what? Schools also change when you bring the arts into the center of them. I always get a memo saying I shouldn't be saying this when I, when I do, but they can't stop me. Um, <laughs> I've been referring to basically our national arts education policy uh, as no test left behind. <laughs> our, our, colleagues, uh, our colleagues on the President's Committee uh, on the Arts and the Humanities have made some important strides toward this with their Turnaround Arts Initiative uh, that marries the arts into the, into the Department of Education School Improvement Grant Program. They are working in some of the nation's lowest performing elementary and middle schools in order to test the hypothesis that high quality and integrated arts education can boost academic achievement motivate student learning, uh, and improve school culture in the context of overall school reforms. In other words, the arts are not something that you address after you solve the big problems. The arts are part of the first order solutions. And you know what? We have plenty of other examples of programs that work too, all across the country. Human beings innately have the tendency to chase the next new thing. And we each fall into the trap of thinking we know better and more than anyone else who came before us. I've gone to more philanthropy and policy convenings over the past three years than any human being should have to endure. <laughs> it's true. And I keep noticing the same thing. Foundation executives call out for the, uh, for the need to fund to scale in order to truly solve problems. And then they each, inevitably, go on to, int to introduce a new boutique program uh, of which they've recently become enamored. There's a total disconnect. In no way am I saying that we need to stop innovating, and I have zero interest in stifling creativity. But if we want to actually change the state of arts education in this country, we need to grow the infrastructure that is already in place and expand it to the places it has not yet reached. It may be time to stop investing as much effort in figuring out, in figuring out what else works and start doubling down on what already works. We need to do a better job of backing the folks who already have proven track records of succeeding. The NEA is uniquely positioned to know the full range of exemplary arts education programs that exist. We, we do have that overview. We are already a national funder of arts education. We now need to expand our work and become a national clearinghouse for schools and school leaders. And if we want the arts to be taken as seriously as other subjects, the arts need to start behaving like other subjects. Standards and assessment are the mainstays of teaching and learning across all subjects. We need to stop pretending that they do not have anything to do with the arts. Yes, the arts are about idiosyncrasy, they are about inspiration, and they are about breaking the rules. But before I can break the rules, I have to know what the rules are. Before Picasso could get all cubist, he had to understand perspective. Standards and assessment, when done properly, do not stifle the artistic impulse. They build the foundation from which to launch it. Fast forward to today, both agencies, as you know, are still vulnerable. All the more proof that the culture wars of the 1960s may have diminished what a peace treaty has not been signed. If that is true, and I believe it is, our gathering today and similar proceedings all over this country should be seen as teaching and learning moments about the future of the American Republic. A 
few observations. Arts literacy in the United States is at once near the center of our democratic system and a part of a shifting cultural landscape. The inherent freedom of unencumbered artistic expression coincides with the nation's great leaps forward in democratic life and democratic sensibilities. A few examples. The singing of the sorrow songs as slavery ended. The rise of jazz as the nation's truly democratic art form. The weaving into a variegated national culture, the cultures hammered out by immigrants from all over the globe. Artistry confirms that we are humans. Arts education confirms that being humans matter to us.